So now we are looking at the same thing. We haven't changed the energy. We've just gone into the incoming and reflected waves are now shown separately. So <clears throat> the first question is, what do the two parts of the wave function in the leftmost region represent? So if we let this play, we can see that one is moving to the right and one is moving to the left. And so this is our incident wave is the one moving to the right. Our reflected wave is the one moving to the left. And since they are almost equal in amplitude, that's part of why it looks like we see a standing wave when we look at the sum. Now this is probably a, a situation where the um, accuracy of the simulation is such that they look identical, but again, the reflection probability here is only, uh, the coefficient is 0.96. Now in the central barrier region, it's a little trickier to see, I'll pause. So here we kind of can see that this one is exponentially rising and then this one is exponentially falling. So I let it play and again we see a little bit going one way, much more going the other. So remember that because this is a second order differential equation, there are two solutions and we don't have a reason to exclude them. So what's happening on the inside is a sum. The exponential decaying term is much, much bigger, but that second term, which is the exponential rising term, that one is there as well. Why is there only one curve in the rightmost region? Well, again, here we had the, the incident and then the transmitted, oh, sorry, the reflected. Here, it's just the transmitted. So this is just kind of key to understand the notion that we have two here because it's what you're sending in, what's shooting back, and then what's making it through comes over here. So not too bad. So now we get to the boundary conditions. And this is again a place where many people are con uh, confused. So let's talk about the boundary conditions here at zero nanometers. Again, it's easiest to pause. And now you might say, wait, this looks totally wrong because I see these nice sharp edges and they don't meet. So in general, our boundary condition, as long as we have a finite potential, is that our wave function and our first derivative need to be continuous. Now here we're looking at the separate pieces. If we go into sum, it's really clear that our wave function and the first derivative are in fact constant. When we go into the separate version, you have to actually add up the two waves on the left. So this wave up here, notice that this would be positive valued and then this is negative valued. When we look at the sum, well, it's a little bit tricky to, uh, that this value actually brings it back up because if you look at this exponentially rising, it's zero there. So it's a little bit difficult to see. I don't know if zooming in will help, not really. But basically we add this piece which brings this one down there up there. On the right, again, you would add them to get to that piece. So wherever I stop, and again, it's tricky to see. So now, again, we, they're both positive. And so when you add the waves on the right, sorry, on the left, they end up adding to be what's here. So, so the boundary conditions, are, it's really important to keep in mind that it's the sum of the two pieces on the left is equaling the sum of the two pieces in the barrier. And again, the sum makes that much more much more obvious. Um, but the key is that the separate pieces don't have to satisfy that boundary condition. It's really the sum of them. The right edge, same thing, that you have this exponentially falling and exponentially rising piece, you add them together and that's going to be your transmitted wave. Again, it's not so clear when you are looking at the sum pieces, sorry, the separate pieces, but in the sum, you see that that's always true. So now, um, let's, and part of what went with question four was that we are going to leave the barrier height the same, but actually change our uh, particle energy. So I went through and was showing you the boundary conditions for our initial situation. Um, but we can, for instance, actually just move this down a little bit. And it is still the case that, you know, these two pieces on the left would add together to give you that. That's always there. So now why does decreasing the energy of the plane wave decrease your transmission probability? Now it's 0 0.01. And the answer is that when we decrease the energy, this exponential decay happens faster. So as I make this bigger, you can see now that it makes it over here and has a higher amplitude because this exponential decay isn't as fast. If I make this really low, now it happens really, really quickly. Again, this, this is now slow, but you can see that it really comes down and is hitting zero, even when it's maybe halfway. 
And if we were near the top, you can see now that it's still an exponential decay, but it doesn't go all the way down to zero. Right, remember that this here is your zero line. So as we change the height relative to the barrier, the key is that that's changing how quickly your exponential decay occurs. So when the energy of the plane wave higher um, than the barrier, right, okay, um, notice that there's going to be a place where it equals one, but then as I keep increasing, it goes down, right? So it goes bigger, 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 watch your transmission probability, one, and then it goes back down. So what's happening is there's this special point where your wavelength on in between, right? If you notice here, it's a little bit difficult to see, but we basically have a half wavelength in the well. If I go a little bit higher, that isn't what's happening. So you get perfect transmission if you have basically a wavelength. Now, when I say a wavelength, I mean of this kinetic energy not of here and so if i go a little bit too high now it's it's wrapped a little bit more around and so there's a special condition and again mathematically you see it in terms of like sine of some stuff but yeah you actually get and and what i can do let me actually drop this down so again as i increase 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 it becomes one Okay, well, in this case, the barrier is so low, it stays one, that doesn't work. Okay, so it becomes one and then decreases again. So that decrease is real. And again, you can see it kind of clearly here that now there's more than a half wavelength. And again, down at that special point, there's now very clearly just a half wavelength. And so that means that if it's, if I go back to the sum mode, you're really keeping, um, just the whole thing going through. Nothing, nothing is being reflected. Okay, um, so what's special about that energy of is that this then, um, the difference here is giving you that half wavelength. So now uh, we have the transmission probability is equal to one. Let's drop down that right hand region and see what happens. Oh no, my transmission probability has actually decreased. And the reason for that is that even though you still have that half wavelength here, the boundary condition over here now isn't quite the same. So this is where it's a little bit confusing because before it worked out, but you need to have your first and your, your first derivative and your uh, wave function to be continuous. And so since here, now you can see that in fact, this is a big energy. So these, um, this wavelength is much shorter. That's changed what that first derivative has to look like. And so no longer do you have that nice boundary condition um, that before you had some nice symmetry here. And so it really was that half wavelength. So mathematically, this is a little bit complicated, but it's just important to remember that it's really coming from the boundary conditions, not only that half wavelength. Um, key. So now um, would we say that the energy has changed? Well, the total energy of the particle has stayed the same. So remember that when we talk about the energy of the particle, that's a fixed value, but now the potential is different. So the effective kinetic energy, to use the classical term, is different now, but the energy of the particle itself hasn't changed. Okay, I'm going to stop here, and then the third video will look at the well and then the wave packet.